My name is Philippe and I'm, I'm a composer and I'm not going to be talking about exclusively about the software I, I developed but I'm going to be talking more about the motivations that led me to, to develop the, the software itself. And well, since I began to, to study composition I was always fascinated by the idea of, of controlling music in the, at runtime but being able to shape it. So the idea is that if you are with a group improvising music, uh, my feeling uh, frequently is that I want people to do some, some things that they're not doing or, they're, or that I think I, they, they could do it and that would sound better and also to be able to shape what they're doing towards the future. Uh, maybe it's a kind of control freak, uh, uh, I don't know, but it's, it's something that when I'm improvising with, with musicians that I, that I tend to, to, um, to feel. And it's no different from the, when Bobby McFerrin picks up random people from the audience and then he, he gives them a, a, he sings a loop and then they're singing and then he gives another loop to another uh, to the rest of the group and another loop to the rest of the group and he's kind of composing music in real time. Of course, this is in a, a very specific music style. I'm not I'm not so much into that. I'm talking about more abstract uh, music. But again, the attitude is the same. You want to you want to tell people what they could do that you think it's going to be better, and you want to lead the way or to guide them to to the places that you want them to be. Um, and of course, in addition to this, I was also starting to to learn Max MSP, and I was really interested in, in digital interactive systems. So I was also very keen to to explore actually what is interaction, actually where where do in the where do the interactions um, where, where where what can you interact with, and how how can you talk to people about about this also. From a music composition, from a music composition point of view, but also from the perspective of, of computer music. So when I went to, to Sonology uh, in The Hague, my idea to 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 materialize to materialize this idea was to design a system to do live score generation. So for me, having a background as a trumpetist from classical music and jazz. It seemed natural to me to be able to um, create a system of scores that I could change in real time, and by this I could be telling people what I want them to do without uh, making without making gestures or, or without writing in, and and without talking. So for me, that seemed a, a, an interesting way to to induce people to play. Um, to play a specific specific music, and this this first experiment led me to to create a system called Odaiko. This is was in 2004, and basically what you have is a, a composer that is also performing electronic music, and you had an assistant, and the assistant is the best name I got for the people that is generating scores. So it's not like the assistant of the composer; it's someone that is rendering the scores and controlling the scores in real time and of course uh, hopefully you'll have performers to play to play your music that are reading the scores in real time and the, um, the assistant can change the scores in real time according to what the composer uh, previously decided and I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that ahead so just to give you an overview I'll play with the speaker from the computer and this was a piece where I used Odaika and Odaika was mostly based on rhythm so it's, it's like a piano roll, a MIDI piano roll so you have these events that are coming and you can put more or less so basically I was uh, just telling people play more or play less and you could uh, articulate that with everyone so this is a piece for electronics and, and gamelan with this, with this system uh, hopefully you can hear I'll just put some minutes. So when people are playing, this is when the score is telling them to, to play.
And in, in, in this system there were three panels, and panels are the things that I showed to the musicians. One was called the sieves, and the sieves is a kind of symmetry theory that Chanak is used in some of his pieces, so you could just decide how symmetrical the events are, which is related to how much someone is going to be playing or not. And then there was another panel that was the solo, and the solo panel is just play whatever you want, but of course try to listen to what everybody is doing. And uh, another another panel that was just silent, so it's important that you're able to tell someone to, to stop playing. You know. So after this uh, experiment, uh, when I did when I did find time in 2013 to to continue this investigation and try to develop a new a new approach, um, I I was I will I was asking myself what I want if I want to control uh, what the people are, are doing. And I said already that I like to have control. And maybe that's a bit old-fashioned, or maybe the, again it's a bit control freak. But uh, I'm not so much into free improvisation context. And I'm I'm happy to to play, but if someone commissions me a piece, it's not it's never something that I I would do. But again, if you're generating scores in real time, there's also there's always a degree of indeterminacy in, in involved, and so you have to accept this. So. What, what do I mean when I say what do I want to control is, ex is what I want to be deterministic about about all the things because you cannot you cannot generate rhythm, pitch, harmony, timer, everything in, at the same time. So you have to to control. So what do I want to control? And for me, again, just like Odaiko, for me, what I like to control specifically is rhythm. And by rhythm, I don't mean bars and beats. I mean uh, density is maybe the, the best word. So I want to be able to decide what if people are playing a lot or less, and of course articulate that within within the within the ensemble. So you can be controlling rhythm at runtime, but by controlling rhythm at runtime, you can also uh, guide the music to some place. So you can already predict that in two minutes' time, I'll be able to. Uh, make it the solo, make the piano make a solo, and you can shape these things accordingly at run time. So the idea of rhythm is actually my idea of rhythm, which actually is not mine. This is already this already come from Barres when he was talking about musical form being rhythm, and I, I, I agree pretty much with that perspective. So if you're shaping music at run time, but you know where you want to take music from A to B to C, whatever this part means. You're shaping music at runtime, so you're actually talking about the musical form. And I could uh, uh, fundament this idea of taking uh, the music to certain <coughs> places, for instance with pitch, but what I'm more interested is to, to work with rhythm. So pitch, for instance, is something that I Leave, uh, let I leave to chance, not completely, I will talk about it, but uh, I, I trust the musician, let's say. Um, yes. Now, how do I want to control them? It's, it's well, so just, just to finish what, what I was telling about. When I decided that I wanted to control rhythm, um, I decided also that I want to use graphical notation. And for me, graphical notation it's, it lends itself much more to rhythmic uh, performance. Uh, it's the, as complementary to Odaiko, the, all the all the new panels I added are much more. Have, some of them have a, a, a deeper pitchness embedded in it. So, pitch for me is high, medium, and low, and all the graphics that I will show you have embedded this idea but they don't specify exactly what pitch you know it's just a uh, guideline high medium and low and lastly how, how do I want to control this this is also a quite important uh, question because if you're generating scores in real time it means that you have to take time to make the action even if it's pressing a mouse it takes time and if, if you if you have to take time you're delaying, delaying things, and of course, music 
time in music it's 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 fundamental it's it's quite important so how do i want to control this it's also a very important question in this kind of uh, environment i believe and uh, so far it's not the perfect solution uh, but you have to control things actually with mouse and it's everything is software control and i will and i will show this to you let me just show a video so you can actually see what i'm talking about so this these four computers would be the scores and that's me <coughs> there with the with the, the application that is the the system the one that can really generate the scores so you can see i put there that panel which is called cells that one is called balls and i'm going to put another panel on the other and then next to to the other and this is actually what the musicians are seeing so they're seeing this animated score happening in real time and you can shape this uh, in real time <clears throat> now as you can see the, the graphics you know compared to the things that uh, uh, we just saw by Robert and uh, these are these are very naive kind of graphics but they are supposed to be like that because uh, I want people to be to be able to read quickly what is being uh, shown to them and I want to be de them to be able to interpret these things quite quickly and graphical scores that are very simple very ridiculous almost it's uh, I think it's the best way to to show them so the title of this talk is composing expectations because I think the design is song this software that I did it's it's pretty much about uh, designing expectations of so the pr predictability and um, and it's about generating expectations in in real time so there are two steps that I think are quite important to to design this idea of, of expectation the first one has to do with with the musicians and I often show the software show the this show this these panels to the musicians beforehand because I don't I don't want them to be surprised I don't want them to be expecting something unknown I want them to be um, aware of the types of graphics that they are going to to be getting and there's there's this is important because as I said I don't I don't I don't want them to be surprised but I also want to hear the kind of output they give to you know to these things blinking and the squares going up and down which is very naive as I said but uh, a, a good performer or, or, or it's, not, it's not being good but this kind of system you know these kind of things are very naive and if you show this to a classical uh, music performer you, you will not uh, be comfortable with this and probably someone that is already used to, to do improvisation music to play contemporary music will be much more able to read a kind of poetry embedded with this, especially when there are electronics involved and when, and when there are other performers involved. So this first step of kind of rehearsal to show them the, the software and to, and to hear what they do, it's really important for the next step. And the next step for me is creating a Metascore. And uh, a Metascore, I'm going to... That's fine, sorry. A meta score. Sorry. So for me, this is a meta score. So after they hear what the ensemble or the musician uh, does, naturally, I go home and then I design a kind of meta score. This is for clarinet and flute. The first line, the second line is piano, third is violin, the fourth is violoncello, and the last one is electronic, which I I was playing myself, so I didn't put anything. But it could have but my idea of a meta score is this and I think the the meta score it's important because it enables you to um, it enables you to to get a stronger sense of expectations and of course usually 
I am performing the electronics and I give this meta score to the assistant. So there's a kind of noise involved because he is going to have to read this. But of course there's no time, there's not, not so much indications. What I'm telling here is that the cello is not going to be playing. The other ones are probably playing from the things that, that already were doing before. And after some point the cello will start to play that panel and I will show you that that's what I call shake and it's basically uh, a ball that has a, an algorithm with the noise and then sometimes it flickers more, sometimes it flicks less. And, and then the clarinet and the flute are going to stop and then the violin and the clarinet and the flute are going to be uh, starting at the same time playing that panel which is, uh, which is called cells. So the way that the assistant shapes things, as he has to, to interpret, he has to be listening what the other people are doing in order to, um, to put, in order to perform this kind of meta score. So um, there's already a lot of noise involved in all this, in all this environment. And as I said, it's, it's hard, but again, that's what motivates me to do this. Uh, to, to see the balance between determined determine, determinacy and indeterminate element. So that's where the, the interest or the compositional motivation for myself lies. It's, it's this balance of what's going to happen, what, what will I predict and what is, uh, is left to, to chance. Um, so in terms of data flow, this would be the case. So you have the assistance interface, uh, I'll show that to you. And he has a meta score that I previously, or the composer previously, uh, makes itself, makes for, for the assistant, I mean. And there are up to four independent scores that the assistant can be generating um, in, uh, in real time. And let me show this to you. If so this before this was called my answer, but then I changed, but I haven't updated. So let me see if I can change the resolution so it can fit. Uh, uh, well, there's no way I can change the resolution, I guess. Maybe for this. I cannot change the resolution, so I'll go back to this. Yes. Ah. Okay. Ah, great. Okay. So this is the um, the assistant interface, and again. Technologically wise, this compared to open music or to music, this is uh, very, very simple. But again, this is myself constructing, uh, developing tools to experiment things that I want to try compositionally wise. So uh, it's, it's different things. So these are the four independent scores, and you can just choose the, the panel that you want, um, and it will. Now put hopefully everything will go okay. I have to run the code otherwise it will be full screen. I have to do it here. Uh, IP error, so let's not uh, We tried a while ago, it worked, now it hasn't worked. Anyways, I'll show this to you. Uh, it's 
getting weird and weird. And so this is where you can uh, choose the panel that you want. And each panel has parameters that you can change just to add variation to the panel itself. And the, the person that is creating the scores or generating the scores never really sees what's on the screen of the performer. So he only has a screenshot. And for me this is really important because it puts an emphasis on listening. So although this is a graphical and notational score, my aim is actually to put a strong emphasis on listening. And for me, this system is also a kind of way to develop a, a kind of, of tuning between the people. And for me, being in tune with other people is being, is being listening. So that's why I don't put um, the animations itself here. So these are all different. The only one, this is one that you can, you can draw. And, um, and of course there's the soul and the silence, which I think it's important. Um, and this one is, is quite important because this one enables you to sync everybody. And again, for me, being able to sync an ensemble, it means that the, the performance is not chaotic or is not random. If you can sync everybody, and, and by syncing I mean that you can stop everyone at the same time, or you can put everybody playing the same rhythm, or you can just simply put everyone playing at the same time, for me it's really important because it imprints a sense of order. And of course, if you have order, if you, if you feel that there is order in the piece, you also feel that there is control. And again, for me, control is, is, is quite important. So with this, you can sync uh, everybody. And everyone can, can have at, at least the same kind of panel. Probably most people will do different variations, but everybody will have the same kind of texture to, to be playing. Um, um, well, check, uh, just have make, make yes. more questions. I'll, I'll be finishing now. <coughs> uh, is okay. So, I think in a perfect situation, um, in a perfect situation, I think that upon a, 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 a graphic impulse that the performers are listening and what they output, how do they interpret it musically, should be interpreted by the assistant that is generating scores, which in turn is uh, interpreting the, the meta score. And of course, the, this, this input should be listened by everybody. And the way that they are interpreting scores should be in tune with everybody. So uh, it's actually the case that if this tuning really happens and if people are actually playing with each other, the scores is actually the least important thing here because the scores are just mediating the scores. It's like just uh, somehow poetry. So it's it's not meant to be interpreted literally. This is there's no high score or it's, it's not guitar ear or, or anything. It's it's completely the opposite. So you should, you should be able to see what's musically interesting beyond a uh, uh, ridiculous uh, square going up and down. So that's, that's my aim and that's, that's what I really wanted. That's why I really strive this idea of controlling people and carrying them and getting them to places that I want them to go. So I'll just put... This is the piece for ensemble. I'll just maybe put a little bit. Now, of course, you cannot really 
avoid pitch. Uh, you have to deal with it if you're playing with pitch instruments. So usually I give them very uh, general ideas like uh, gravitate around note D and whenever the ensemble stops uh, at some point in the piece then uh, gravitate towards note D for instance. So like a kind of tendency mask but again, this is, is, this is done by intuition. It's not really now D, now A, or whatever. But you have to deal with pitch. Not really, unless you play with. Watch out. Please, Dominique, tell me when it's when it's fine. I hope I was I was clear, but I'm happy to. Uh, not like that, but it, it it works okay. I don't know why is it complaining, but let me try so, it again. What kind of instruction are they giving uh, with, uh, with the score? Um, <coughs> yes. Okay, so this would be the first, and they. This, the cities and you can control the speed by, uh, or you can close the area. Okay. For instance... So it becomes like a, I don't know, like a, a very slow trail or travel? What, what should like... Uh, like well, that's, that's the challenging thing. I usually, uh, according to what they do in the rehearsal, I kind of try to give them very brief uh, ideas, so tremolo, okay, just try to play a tremolo, try to hear what everybody's saying, and try to sync your note and make a tremolo. But it, there's always a lot of noise embedded uh, in, the way, in the way that, that the noise is, uh, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not, I, don't, I don't want to be very specific, but I want to convey direction, so it's more, much more about guidelines than being, okay, play tremolo there, or uh, you know, this, this thing could be, you know, just start piano and go for it, or start with one note and then put more notes, or... Uh, and the, uh, the, the, uh, the pattern changes over time, right? This one, yes. Uh, I mean... Yes, the, you can put, like, more. I think for one, for one part, like, the, say, the clarinet, mm -hmm. um, so that the player will see first pattern, then switch another one, etc. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And you, during the performance, do you stay in control, or is that all planned in advance? No. Uh, I, I give the meta score to the assistant, and the meta score is that thing that at some point I want them to silence three instruments and there's going to be a piano. It's all planned in advance? It's the meta score, yes. Yes. Okay. But the the way that he, he makes this happen in real time, it's his interpretation. So this course, meta score yeah. is uh, it's not. But I mean the, the, the scenario is. is yeah, is yeah. All yeah, because I want to be sure that uh, again this idea of musical form for me is really important. So I want to go from A to B to C, right. and I know that. But then all the indications I have uh, a lot of indeterminacy involved. Mm -hmm. But then again, that's the motivation for me to, to develop this specific kind of um, music, let's say. So, just make the last question, because... Mm -hmm. Okay, so for the meta score, what, what, what's the level of details that you can give? For, for example, can you really uh, include details on, on the control of uh, uh, no. a given pattern? No. Uh, so, that's, it's the assistant's responsibility yes. to... to yes. Yes, but 
again, this is this is still like a, a kind of child of mind, because probably in the hands of someone else, you maybe would put this. So uh, the, the, the yeah. assistant is a kind of a director. Or like yes, the is a, I, 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 I think he's a performer, just like the other ones, but he's just uh, general, controlling the score in real time. I get, Hmm? Like a director. Like a yeah, that's I usually was was to call him Maestro actually. You can see here Maestro. Not in the oh, not in the classical way, like uh, mm -hmm. but in the sense that he's guiding things, so just <coughs> like 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 a conductor. But then a lot of people will tell me that Maestro is a kind of uh, old concept, so maybe assistant it's 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 more neutral or whatever necessarily. Okay. Um, it's a very control freak assistance. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you very much.